try to simplify try to simplify it for you uh and need to if you have questions please put them on the chat uh dr salinas please interrupt me anytime you want to that's perfectly fine um so uh just to kind of jump into it i'm gonna take kind of a mathematical approach to it at the same time i want to We'll talk a little bit about feedstuffs to use to balance rations, but uh, we're going to spend most of our time on a mathematical approach to it. And, you know, when we're trying to do this at home, um, we're pretty limited, really, on what we have to work with. Uh, so it may not be as complicated as, as what we think it might be. You know, if we, if we want to balance diets for a company, you know, they've got least cost ration balancing programs that they use. They've got lots of ingredients to choose from. And so they can come up with the cheapest combination that still meets their specifications. You know, in our case, we don't have those options a lot of times. So um, we may be looking at one or two or three different ingredients and, and that keeping it simple. So... But regardless of how we do this, uh, there's some points I want to make about some philosophy about ration balancing. One is, you know, these requirements are a target. They're not an exact. I mean, they're based on a lot of different animals, a lot of research, but they're not necessarily based on uh, your individual herd. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, secondly, we have to make some decisions. What are we trying to accomplish with our nutritional program? Are we trying to are we trying to feed a show flock? So that anytime somebody comes out and looks at our animals, they're in tip-top condition, um, that makes a difference. Uh, are we trying to take a hardline approach? I want to select the animals that fit in, in my management into a low-cost operation. So if I overfeed everybody, I mask those differences. I, I want to find out the ones who can make it on less. So we're going to aim toward a little a little lower uh, on the requirements. So you have to make those choices. Our, um, it takes more energy, more protein to feed a ewe that's lactating with twins than it does singles. Are we going to sort those out? Uh, if not, um, you know, what, what is your target to aim for? So those are things you have to ask yourself. Those are only things that you can answer uh, in your management scenario. So, uh, but some fundamental ideas that um, when we're balancing rations, some, some order helps a lot. One of the orders is, what order of uh, what order am I going to balance in? And the first thing we need to figure out is we need to look at intake. And I'll go into some logic behind this later. Then after we get intake set, then we go for energy and then protein. And then next we go for phosphorus and then we go to calcium and then we finish up with a calcium phosphorus ratio. Sorry about that. And, and the reason is, uh, why do we worry about intake? Well, because when we look in a book and it says, hey, you need to feed this animal a 13% protein diet, that is based off of some number that they're expected to eat, some amount they're expected to eat each day. So if you don't know, what, if you don't get that right, that 13% I'm, so, I'm sorry, Doctor. Can uh, I made a mistake? Uh, can you share again your screen, please? Okay. Um, are we back? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, uh, kind of getting back to that intake, then energy, protein, phosphorus, calcium, and then calcium phosphorus ratio, and again. If we mess up, if if like in our case, sometimes I don't think they eat as much hay as as the book 
says they're supposed to. Well, that means everything else needs to be more concentrated. So we can keep those things in mind. If we have an idea of intake, the animal requires amounts. And that's one thing when we get to the to the ration balancing spreadsheet I want to show you, it works more on amounts. All right, so that's that's kind of why we want intake. All right, then energy, because first of all, energy is is generally our first limiting nutrient. And then um, also energy is cheaper than protein. And if we look at the energy density of things like corn and soybean meal, they're pretty similar to each other, but the protein is vastly different. And, and the last time I checked here about a month ago, soybean meal was about three times the cost of corn. So why do we want to pay three times as much for the energy? Let's balance for energy first, and then we can correct protein deficiency with a protein supplement. All right, protein's expensive. All right, then we go to minerals, and we go to phosphorus first. And the reason we go to phosphorus first is, first of all, because phosphorus is expensive, much more expensive than calcium. Uh, secondly, our supplemental phosphorus sources typically contain calcium. Like, for example, dicalcium phosphate has uh, more calcium than it does phosphorus. But we have some really good calcium sources that don't have phosphorus. Uh, for example, ground limestone, calcium carbonate, those have just some phosphorus contamination, but nothing, um, nothing to really, we're not going to use that as a phosphorus source. So keep that in mind. And then... When we're all when it's all said and done, we finally finish up. We get calcium balanced, but then a lot of times we have to go back and look at the calcium to phosphorus ratio, because a lot of times some of these, particularly byproduct feeds, grain byproduct feeds, are high in phosphorus, like corn gluten feed, distillers grains, both really high in phosphorus. And so if we use those as an energy source, like we'll look at later, um, we're going to have excess phosphorus that we have to balance out. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later on. So that's some of the logic. All right. Are, are there any burning questions about that before we move on to a simple one nutrient ration balancing? You can use uh, your chat if you have any questions. So Dr. Ken Coffey, maybe read or we can comment it. So feel free to write in the chat. Okay, I just glanced at it and I don't see any any new additions. So, all right. There is, there, there, there is a question over there. Okay. Um, Is an intake kind of determined by feed quality? Absolutely. And, and that's the that's the problem. Like I say, in um the the issue with poor quality forage is they physically can't eat as much as they need to. And so we have to do something, uh just supp uh kind of keep track of how much they're eating. We can do that by how fast our bales are disappearing. Uh, it, it's tough. Uh, the bottom line is we start with the numbers and then we adjust accordingly based on what those animals are doing. Because uh, sometimes we get picky animals that, that don't eat like they're supposed to. So yes, uh, that is... Um, yeah, that is a good point. Uh, will these be the same for meat as well as dairy animals? Um, you can formulate these diets. The The website I'll show you when we go to formulating diets, uh, it's set up exactly the same, whether it's goats, sheep, uh, or dairy. They have it for dairy goats as well. So, um, so uh, yes, that is... The, Blip, blip, sorry, uh, talk like porky pig sometimes. Um, so yeah, you can use the same approach for your dairy animals as you would for what we're going to do today. 
All right, then my goats eat more crappy hay than good hay. <laughs> uh, you might be surprised. Uh, I, ours never, we had dairy goats for about 15 years and, and all those things were so picky, uh, just unbelievably picky. And they would, uh, they wasted so much stuff. Uh, our sheep do too, but the the goats, I think, were even worse. So um, if they'll eat it, that's fine. But what's going to happen is physically they're going to fill up. And that, that hay is less digestible. It fills them up. They can't eat as much. So the big thing you're going to have to, particularly with dairy goats, is watch the milk bucket. And if if the milk starts going down, you're going to have to bump up the supplement to make up the difference. Um, it, okay, you, you make a point there. Uh, they eat more, it seems like, to get the nutrients they need. Um, okay, I, uh, I'm... <laughs> that simply is not true, and, and I don't want to be rude about it, but just to avoid wasting a lot of time, physically... The way they eat more is when the microbes break down what is in their rumen. Okay. And I've had this discussion for 35 years now, and, and there's really good science to back it up. Thank you for not taking it as rude. Um, but I they physically eat till they're full on forage. And if the microbes cannot break that forage down because it has too much lignin, too much structural component to it, then it sets in there for longer. And that feeds back to them eating less. They don't magically, they're not magically able to eat more by, when they're lactating, they'll chew faster, they'll regurgitate more, but that doesn't make up for that poor quality and get it to pass out quicker. It stays in there. Till, it, till the microbes can break it down to a smaller particle. Um, I hope that um, I, ho I hope that helps. Now, now, is there any special like a consideration now that this breed cold, that this is snowing, that uh, many farms now are under snowing? Uh, so it's like a difference for the balancing when you have this cold weather than when it's snow as cold as this week? Yeah, I, I don't have any exact numbers to back it up, but uh, the thing we have to be concerned about is exactly them not being able to eat enough. Uh, so this is the time where if we've got some better quality forage, we need to be providing it for it for them because when they digest that forage, they produce heat and that's going to help keep them warm. Um, they're going to drink water and that's going to help them regulate body temperature. Uh, when they, when they physically can't eat more, there's, it's sitting in the room and, and it's not helping them out. Uh, it's not giving them that the physical energy from the fermentation products, but it's also not, breaking down and making it making the heat they need as well so um they need a better quality forage that they can consume a lot of right now to help them fight off the heat i know back um uh, i was in grad school at mizzou back in the uh, late back in the mid 80s and i know we had a bad winter like this and and uh, the reports all across the state lots of cows were dying and those cows had full bellies and they just physically could not eat enough to meet their energy demands and stay warm. Now they'll do things. They'll get down in a low spot. They'll turn their back to the wind. They'll do some things, but they're still, they, they need right now is right now. If you, if you can tell this bale is better quality than another one, you want to put out those better quality bales if at all possible. Thank you. Okay, ready to move on? Yes, please. All right. <laughs> yeah, get on <laughs> with it, dude. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Very good it's conversation, fine. but uh, I mean, it's your time. 
It's your show. Yes, right. <laughs> Sorry, I have a warped sense of humor. Uh, anyway, okay, so let's do a simple ration, uh, just a simple where we're going to balance, say, a 20% crude protein supplement for our animals. And um, how do we do that? Well, first thing we would do is we would look up the feed content, and most of our feeds are listed on a dry matter basis, which helps us out a lot. I mean, I know we don't feed it as a dry matter basis, but um, that way all the nutrients aren't diluted with water. It makes it makes it work better. So um, in this example, corn, soybean meal, we look up corn in a chart. And by the way, I have some, some feed analyses tables at the very back of this publication. If you want, want to look and find those, they'll vary a little bit across where they're published and stuff, but those will get us pretty close. But we got the grain, the corn, 9.8 percent protein soybean meal the 49 percent protein that's as fed on a dry matter basis it's 54 percent protein so we have those two numbers and what we do is we just set them up on the corners of a square this is called a pearson square and in the middle of this square we put our target and so we have our corn, we have our soybean meal, and we're shooting what blend will give us 20% protein. So the way we do this, and it is we subtract across diagonally, forget the signs. Uh, so in other words, soybean meal is 54 minus the 20% gives us 34%. We put that on top. Uh, corn, 20% subtract 9.8%. That leaves us 10.2. And so what these numbers mean then is we go down and we read across. Now, we subtracted diagonally, we read across. So in other words, we need 34 parts of corn. We need 10.2 parts of soybean meal to give us a 20% protein feed. Now, we walk into the feed store, uh, to the to the elevator, and we tell them we want this. The person behind the counter says, okay, sure, no problem. You take that out to the feed mill, and the person points the direction you can go leave. They don't like that. So um, what we need to do is we need to be able to use those numbers. So we simply set them up on a percent basis. So we had 34 parts corn. 10.2 parts soybean meal, that's 44.2 total parts. So if we divide the 34 by 44.2, that means that roughly 77% of that mix needs to be corn. 23% of that mix needs to be soybean meal. And those are the values we can take, say, if we want a ton, we would we could calculate that out. We want five tons. We can calculate that out. So uh, here's the numbers. 77 and 23 are our final uh, numbers. Now, I've got some ways you can check this, and I want to uh, point that out. Never just take those numbers and run with them. Always go back and check. And so there's a couple of simple things. Look at the left side and the right side of this. If we take 54 minus 9.8, does it equal 44.2? If it doesn't, we've made a mistake because when we add the numbers on the right, we subtract the numbers on the left, they should be the same number. If they're not, we made a mistake. And it's easy to make mistakes on this because it's math. Uh, we have more and more trouble with math as we go along. So. Um, so that's one thing we can do. And I've got another thing. I'll show you another uh, check here in a little bit. But um, we can do this for any nutrient we wish to balance for. We can start out with energy. We can, we can then go to protein. We can do a series of these, but it, it gets kind of complicated. So, um, but question, can you make a 40% protein ration using corn and wheat middlings. No way. 
because neither diet has uh, is above 40 percent we have to uh, you know this is just common sense but you have to have um remember i've been teaching this to undergrads who have no idea what any of these speed stuffs are so so have to point these things out but uh 40 percent protein one would have to be above 40 one below 40 for it to average out so um then we can go back we can check our answer all right if we take that roughly 77 percent multiply it by the protein in corn it gives us out of that mix about seven and a half pounds of that protein is coming from corn. If we take the 23% soybean meal, multiply it by the 54% protein that's in the soybean meal, about 12 and a half pounds of that protein in that mix is coming from the soybean meal. So uh, seven and a half, 12 and a half, we're right at, we're at that 20%. And so that's what, uh, so it did work, but be sure and check those things out. All right. Um, I've got another approach here, algebraic approach. Um, since I'm leaving you with the publication, I'll let you go through that. Um, I know if I give students, I teach them this and I teach them the other way, 95% um, will pick Pearson square because it's so much easier to use. Uh, you don't have to, uh, to do as much logic as you do with the algebra. So anyway, um, any questions about um, about that? And for some reason, I have lost um, my, um, my view where I could actually see the chat. So well, you, yeah, Dr. Ken, you say that uh, while you will be using, or you was using the Pearson square, uh, for uh, for uh, protein, and you say that you may be using also for energy or any other. Can you use it uh, for several at the same time, or you select one of those uh, like a energy or protein or or so? Yeah, you you would have to do it one at a time, and that's where it gets complicated because. Now, what you're doing is, all right, you get your final ration of 73 uh, corn, 20 or whatever it was, um, 77 corn, 23 soybean meal. You've got, now you have this mix and you would have to figure out, okay, so say I wanted to balance it for phosphorus. All right, you'd have to go back and, and calculate what that the phosphorus content of that mix and then okay so now how much of this mix am i going to add dicalcium phosphate to 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 bring that phosphorus level up to where i want it so it it, it gets a lot more complicated and so um if you're if you're just simply interested in one nutrient it works great but if you're interested in more than one i i'm a huge fan of the spreadsheets they they're just so much easier to to work through and to see how everything is working as you go and so um so yeah you can do them but you have to do them one at a time one nutrient at a time and then take what you've got now to start with this mix of corn and soybean meal and then go from there so it, it is more it is much more complicated if you want to do more than one nutrient. Okay, so this is good for understanding how the spreadsheet will be working, like at the the basis. It, yeah, somewhat. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Um, okay, if I switch to. Did that switch to a website or do I need to go back? Yeah, probably you had to stop sharing uh, and again to start sharing the new web page okay. that you want. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, University of Maryland has some has some really good information. Um, and this is the one I, I've used for a few years now. 
um, because it, it's pretty, it's fairly straightforward and so it works well, but they've got a lot of enterprise budgets on the nutrition. They've got uh, dairy goat, meat goat, um, and then they've got this UME sheep ration evaluator, and that's what uh, I'm going to show you. But the the goat ones look look the same. It's just the requirements. The numbers are different. So um, so the mechanics are the same. And so that's what I'm going to start working through right now. Okay, so, whoops. Oh, there we go. For the people that they don't have uh, their all the name, uh, will you please send in a chat or just rename? You can rename by yourself. Uh, please just to, to have the complete name of the people that are participating. Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Kim. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, what I've done now is I've pulled up this website and I'm going to work through it like I'm doing on the, on your handout. Uh, I hope that handout looks better than it than it did the first version. Uh, yeah, you you attach the PDF to it, so so yeah, it it should look look like my handout. But anyway, what I want to show you is this. Uh, it's it's a spreadsheet an Excel spreadsheet, and it has step-by-step -step instructions on the first page. Um, and so I want to work through that and show you how, how show you the mechanics of it and kind of work through and do some simple ration balancing. And so show you, hopefully dis demystify it, but um, help you out here. Okay. So uh, the first thing we want to do is with this spreadsheet is to um, we have to know what we're feeding. And so uh, we would go to this feed inventory tab and that's where we're going to punch in what specific feeds that we're going to feed. And on mine, I went ahead and put in some average fescue hay. I put in some distiller's grains. I went ahead and put soybean hulls. I've got some ground limestone in here. Uh, this is not what it had. It had the protein pellet and complete feed there. But um, that's where you're going to punch in the values that that of what you have. If you have your own hay, you can plug those values in right here. And now I want to show you what happens when you do this, though. Um, and I'm going the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go over. If you scroll all the way to the right, there are some there's a feed, their own feed composition table. And so um, I'm just going to pick one and copy and paste it in. Let's say ear corn, since it just kind of caught my eye there. Uh, so. Let's copy these numbers. And let's go back to the feed inventory. And the reason you work off that feed inventory is because that's where everything feeds off. Of, everything works off of that one feed inventory sheet. Okay, I'm going to paste this over top of the protein pellet. Now, here's the weird thing about this spreadsheet and something you just have to watch out for it 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 doesn't copy and paste very well so i'm going to have to go back and adjust this i'm going to plug it in as 0.87 because it's formatted for per, for percentages and so this one the tdn is 0.82 and for those of you who are not familiar tdn stands for total digestible nutrients that is what we use as an S, as a measure of energy uh protein 9% so that's 0 0.09 now uh phosphor or calcium is on ear corn 0.06% so i have to punch this in as 0.0006 
to get it to show up right. And the phosphorus on our ear corn is 0.28%, not 28%. So it's 0 0.0028. I hope that makes sense. Uh, that is a downside of this program when you start copying and pasting things in. You have to put it in as a decimal. So anyway, we have our um, we have our feedstuffs now. Uh, these yellow tabs are the requirements tabs for our different types of animals. And you'll have these requirement tabs on the different um, on the different animals you're looking at. So in my example, I sort of, well, let's get something that's going to take a little bit of work. So I decided let's let's look at lactating ewes. And I just picked 154 pound lactating ewe. And so we would come up here and she, I'm giving her three or more lambs. So we're we've got we've got a uh, we've got a female out there that is working hard. She's producing for three lambs. And as as those of you who've watched them nurse triplets or quads, you know, all three of those want to eat at the same time. So that really complicates things. Um, anyway, let's copy those. And then we go to the worksheet tab, that purple tab right down here. So all, to... all, all those are the requirements of the animals according to the size and to the production and everything. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and I'll, I'll go back there since you, you have a question about it. So we copy, we paste them over the requirements in the ration evaluator worksheet. But let's say, for example, if we were looking at dairy sheep um, here in early lactation, 154 pounder would require four pounds of TDN a day, almost one pound of protein. 0.03 pounds of calcium, 0.02 pounds of phosphorus a day. So yeah, here are the, the amounts that are required for each of these. Now, another thing I don't I don't like about this, but it's something hey, food, there's nothing out there perfect, is there? Um, I know if I made it up, it certainly wouldn't be perfect. So I'm not criticizing Dr. Shinian at all about this, but it's just something I wish they had added was what is the dry matter intake? And so when I go back, I have to keep track of this dry matter intake of 5.04 pounds. That's something that I, I tell my students, write it on a sheet of paper somewhere. So just write that 5.04 pounds down. Uh, and that's what we're going to target that these animals are going to be able to eat. All right, are we ready? Ooh, I see seven questions on the chat. Are, are those new ones we need to address right now or do we move on? Uh, numbers, feed inventory, are, are dry matter numbers correct? Yes, those are dry matter numbers. Thank you for asking that. Um, those are on a dry matter basis. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, the rest of those look like uh, just names of people. So, uh, all right, uh, ready to move on. Okay, all right, let's start. Um, we bring them over, we put them in our ration evaluator worksheet, and I'm not sure why it's this way, but uh, the way Dr. Shinian has it set up is if we're looking for maintenance use, here's the requirement. But notice the feed inventory is the same on all these. So uh, I'm just working down here on this lactation U. You can work whatever you want to. But uh, here are the requirements that I'm going to target. Energy, protein, phos calcium, phosphorus. All right. So uh, when we're starting out, let's start out with our roughage. And so if I was in class, I'd say, okay, give me a number. We're shooting for 5.04 pounds of dry matter. So somebody give me a number. And um, we just, it's trial and error. So just pick something. And let's just, for the fun of it, let's just start with five and see what happens. All right, if we feed them five pounds of hay a day as fed, that's only going to be 4.4 pounds of dry matter. 
So we're really underfeeding them. And that's the nice thing about this ad, working over here in ASFED is we, we do actually have our pounds we need. All right. So I, I like to start out, let's make some bold jumps. Let's go up to six, see what happens. All right, six overshot. So let's just trial and error back to 5.5. Okay, that's that's not enough. 5.75. Seven five. Um, all right, now we're at five point oh six pounds of dry matter. Our target was five point oh four. Now, anybody who wants to argue with me that two hundredths of a pound is worth arguing about, uh, that no, um, I'm not real worried about that. But again, I would caution you to keep that number at the top. At, um, because of the way our animals pick through and waste hay and don't eat as much as I think they should. Um, so I, I don't want to exceed that 5.04 by much at all. But bottom line is this tells us an approximate amount of how much hay I'm going to need to feed. So I can then start looking at other things. So I've got intake fixed, right? I've got intake fixed. So um, what was next on our list? Energy. Did we meet the energy requirement? No, we're over a half a pound short on TDN. So in this case, I pull and pick one, in, one ingredient, distiller's grains. Uh, because it's so popular, there's so much of it used in the feed industry today. Um, so to me, distillers is a logical choice. So let's just start out and throw in some distillers grains. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to, as we add distillers, we're going to take it away from the hay. Because again, these animals are going to eat approximately five pounds a day. Um, and we want to keep it at that. Now, if they eat more, that's great. But if but we, we don't want to overestimate how much they eat. So just eh, pound it at pound and drop the um, drop the hay down by a pound. Well, we made up a little bit, but we didn't make up much, did we? So let's go to two um, and three point seven five, and we're still short. And another thing, notice our intake is creeping up, and so we have to watch that. So I'm. So let's go back to the two and let's go 2.5 and let's take a little more than um, than a half a pound. So what did I do? Okay, 2.5, oh, 05. All right, uh, so we're back close on intake and we're really close on energy. And we could stop there if we wanted to. That's That's close enough. So 0 0.02, so two hundredths of a pound a day deficient. Nah, we're not going to, that's not, our animals aren't going to notice that. All right. So let's say, for example, and I know we went through in, in your sheet, went through and got it exactly right. And, and that's the best thing to do um, as you go along. But that takes a lot of time. And, and, it, and then you have to ask yourself, am I really, is that really worth it? Uh, is that really going to make a difference? I'm going to have to watch my animals and adjust anyway. And my wife's always on me about body condition score. And so, um, you know, are watching those animals occasionally when they're up there eating, feel their body condition score. Uh, are their backbones getting sharp on you? Yeah, I need to feed them more. Um, all right. So um, now let's look at protein and if you remember the hay itself, if you look back on your original sheet, uh, when we when we had hay alone, we were a quarter pound, almost a quarter pound short on protein, and now we're over on protein. We're excess 0 0.12. That's because our distiller's grains has about 26% protein in it. And so when we supplement, we're getting energy. And the nice thing about distillers, that energy is coming from fiber and fat more so than starch. And so the fiber in there 
complement, it's highly digestible fiber that complements digestion in the rumen more so than corn would. And we're getting protein as a bonus for basically the same price or cheaper. So we've got excess protein. All right, so energy, check. Protein, check. What do we do next? We go to phosphorus. And here's something else nice about, okay, let me back up here. If we had used soybean hulls in, in, instead, of, uh, instead of distiller's grains, if we'd used soybean hulls, we would not have met the protein requirement. Just to show you that real quick, um, take out the distiller's grains. See, we're deficient two-tenths of a pound of protein. Uh, soybean hulls are low in protein, high in calcium, low in, low in phosphorus. So uh, completely different feed stuff. Um, and hopefully um, soybean hulls, just to throw it out there, um, that's the outer seed coat on a soybean. They pop those off uh, before they extract the oil. Uh, they're real fluffy. They tend to pellet them these days. But anyway, it's a very, it's a high fiber feed source. It's still good feed stuff, but it's um, it's just that thin outer seed coat on a soybean. Um, animals do well on them. So anyway, all right. So uh, let's look at phosphorus. If we went to phosphorus next, hey. We have excess phosphorus. So by feeding distiller's grains, we not only took care of our energy, but we took care of our protein. We took care of our phosphorus. So we don't need any additional phosphorus because of this. All right. Now, one thing that it does do, however, is two things. One is we're deficient in calcium. So we go there next. And also we're deficient. Our calcium phosphorus ratio is 0.7. And as I point out on the handout, I like to shoot for a calcium phosphorus ratio of one and a half to one. And a lot of the textbooks say two to one. And the requirements aren't a two to one. Uh, if you looked, if you did the math on those, they're rarely a two to one. So, um, but the point is that if we get those too low, uh, we can we can cause a lot of issues. We can cause kidney stones in males. We can cause some uh, calcium phosphorus imbalance in our offspring, um, bone deformities, that kind of stuff. So we want to keep that ratio important. Like we talked about last week with minerals, uh, ratios are important. So, um, so fortunately, we have a really good feedstuff called ground limestone. It's inexpensive. It's something we can go to the feed store. Typically, we can tell them and they they'll they can sell us a 50-pound bag of it and we can use that. But let's see how much it's going to take. Um, but this stuff is 34% calcium and our requirement is very, very short. So we want to start out really low. And so I'm going to say, what about a tenth of a pound of that? If I add a tenth of a pound per sheep, look at what I did. I, I went from a deficiency to way, to way, way over, and my calcium phosphorus ratio is a two to one. So I don't even need a tenth of a pound per head to make up that difference. So let's back up. Oops. How about 0.05 pounds per head? And we'll, we'll talk about this in a little bit here. All right, so 0 0.05 pounds per head gets our calcium above the requirement. And more importantly, it gets our calcium phosphorus ratio close to that target of one and a half. So we're close with that. Let's just go 0 0.06 just for the fun of it and see, and that puts us up to a 1.6. So somewhere 0 0.05 to 0 0.06 pounds per sheet per day makes makes up that that excess phosphorus we're getting from the distiller's grains. And you know, what we've done in the past, we just top dressed it in the feed bunk. This is where welcome by if you've got a mixer, mix it in. If you're going to take this diet to the feed store and have them mix it for you, have them put it in. But um, it's not hard to deal with. And 0.06 pounds 
if if I've got a hundred ewes, that's six pounds of ground limestone a day, along with um, two hundred and fifty pounds of distiller's grains that I'm feeding. So that's a very small amount. Uh, you know, you can actually the easiest way, hey, just get you a cup, and if you've got a little food scale, like my daughter-in-law has this nice little food scale that she uses for cooking and things. And you could just weigh up of however much you need per day, put a mark on it, go out and sprinkle that on top and let them eat it. So that's, um, that's simplified ration balancing. And, you know, depending on what your hay is, it's going to take more or less, depending on the requirements, it's going to take um, more, more or less of your supplement to, to balance the needs out. But once you get to this point, um, first of all, like right now, or do they have access to the hay enough that they're going to eat as much as they need? Um, if you're talking about, I know when we had dairy goats, it's funny, one day we were having a blizzard and I, I got out there with my camera taking shots because it was such a beautiful day the big old snowflakes and and here's the sheep out there the the hay rings sheep are are shoulder to shoulder up there eating out snow is piling up on their backs and then i turn over to the uh, turn over to my right side and in the barn and i look and there are the goats and they're underneath the barn looking up and saying, no, <laughs> we're not going out there uh, it's not nice. We're not going out there. And so they would sit in the barn and starve. And so are they going to eat enough hay? Uh, that's something we have to make sure they have access to, especially with the weather like it is. And this is a starting point in um, looking at our animals. Are they, are they losing condition? If so, we're going to have to bump this amount of supplement up and hope that they don't reduce intake so much of the hay. So, all right. Um, why don't I quit there and open it up for more questions? Y'all have had some great questions. So uh, fire it at me and I'll tell you I don't know. Also, we have the, the two polls. So you just tell me when do you want to launch the polls. Okay, well, if, if there aren't any questions right now, go ahead and launch launch the, the question. The, 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 first, the first one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, right now, we have over there to see the people answer. Yeah, 22, 25%, 30% of the people have answered, 40%, 41, 45%. Yeah, it seems like the, the people are not sleeping. <laughs> well, and, and we're already not, we're, <laughs> we're, <laughs> We're already not getting a hundred percent because we're getting wow, everybody's um yeah, almost answers to all of them. All right. So um okay, so 24 out of 31. Let's go ahead and end the poll. Okay. All right. Um distillers grains. Um uh, distillers grains, we're balancing for energy. So the first question I just put in there, um, we're balancing for energy, so that's not going to give us an excess there. Uh, distiller's grains is fairly high in protein, and it's also high in phosphorus. So when we use it to balance an energy deficiency, typically we're going to get, our answer is going to be protein and phosphorus there. Um we're getting excess phosphorus, excess protein. Uh, distiller's grains is low in calcium. And so we're, we're not going to get any excess calcium from that. It, the correct answer is protein and phosphorus. Okay. Okay. The one for me, um, 
let me I have to let me go with the next one. Yeah. Just let me find it. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I I go, I go, I go, I go. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you're doing the technology. <laughs> Everybody's learning about this every yeah. day. Okay. So yeah, what is the most logical order for balancing nutrient requirements for small ruminants? This seems like a the vote of for the president just uh, okay. increasing increasing one and lowing others and okay okay um, we start out with energy because energy is first limiting and energy is cheaper than protein we've got protein sources that have basically the same amount of energy as our energy sources. And they're three times as expensive. So we balance for energy first, and then we go to protein next. And then we go to phosphorus because two reasons. One is phosphorus is expensive, and our phosphorus sources have calcium in them. Our calcium sources, we have calcium sources without phosphorus. So it's easy to balance for phosphorus first and then to come on top with something that strictly has calcium without phosphorus. And then we finish up with the calcium phosphorus ratio. So in this case, the correct answer would be that last one, D. Okay. Good. Okay, I had one more on there, I think. It was a truth. Uh, uh, I let, you let me see because I just I just saw two of them. Uh, let me okay. go to the email. That's all right. Um if we I see we have another chat question, maybe. Um oh okay. Uh can't answer because it's on the phone. Okay. Um, well, hopefully you can answer in your head and then figure out. And, and that's why I wanted to ask these to make sure that we're we're getting these points across. You you want to ask the question? Sorry, be, because I don't have it. Uh, you want to ask, and the people answering it through the chat. Okay. Um, you say that is that is true or, or not true? Yeah, it was a true false question. Um, okay, yeah, true or false. Um, yeah, okay. Got to get everything out of my way. It's, just, it's blocking my screen. Sorry. Uh, okay, true or false. We can formulate a 20% protein supplement using soybean hulls, which have 12% protein, and distiller's grains, which has 23% protein. Can we formulate a 20% protein supplement using soybean hulls and distiller's grains? So the people answering the chat, true or false? Yes. Can you, re can, can you repeat the, the statement, please? Yeah. Um, true or false? We can formulate a 20% protein supplement using soybean hulls and distiller's grains. Soybean hulls has 12% protein, distiller's grains has 23% protein. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of True, yes, true, true, true. Okay, yep. Of the people who've answered, yes. Yes, we can because one's above, one's below. So we can do that. 
and that would make a pretty nice supplement for us if if we wanted to do that um because the um that kind of helps modify the excess protein in the distillers and the excess phosphorus and the soybean hulls have more calcium so it helps with that calcium phosphorus ratio so that's actually would be a pretty decent blend so okay um see more um chats uh thank you scott um uh do you know him um or more simple to use to balance um than the spreadsheet um the i've looked i've looked at some others and um frankly i thought this one was once you kind of just sat down and and threw it i thought this one was the easiest one to understand and the most user friendly of the ones i've used one of the other uh, yeah linda i do like spreadsheets but uh this one uh, <laughs> yeah never let your wife be on the on the conference when you're talking uh, bad idea um but it's to me the most user friendly and it's just and yeah we had an hour to work through it today so or less so uh just go through the go through the examples and and work through it i mean watch the numbers and how they're moving if you do something and tdn goes way above um then you just back off on it um so uh if you just a little bit of time and a little bit of patience and and you can come up with the ration that you need but some of the others uh, i know even <laughs> i remember going to a presentation for one of them from another place and and even the people who were trying to present it said this thing is too complicated we need to simplify it uh so um i thought this one was pretty good And I think the point is very good. It's time to go milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's time to go do chores. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think it was a very good learning because it's very practical. Sometimes we use some spreadsheets uh, or some uh, balancing rations uh, uh, applications and we don't understand what we are doing and I think this is like an intermediate uh, part of the work. So I think it's pretty good. And we are so thankful to you, Dr. Ken, about all this uh, teaching uh -huh. that you are giving to us. And I I, I think uh, it's very important also, and also all database of uh, all that uh, feed uh, with all the information. Sometimes it's difficult to get the information of uh, the nutrients the content nutrients of uh, each one of the forages, each one of the different supplements over there, and also the requirements. And so it's very, very easy way to be doing this balancing ration. So to check in, also to check what we are doing, how we are feeding our animals also. So you can put whatever in that, in that one, what you are giving, what you are feeding your animals, and we'll be like a, making a diagnosis if you are uh, under or over giving energy, protein, calcium, phosphorus. So, yeah, yeah. that's a, that's an excellent point. Uh, yeah. There's uh, a question there about yeah. the feed value. And is that a useful number in feed balancing? Um, no, it really isn't because the none of the programs that I'm aware of use that as any measure to balance by. And because that's specifically for that that particular hay, it's based on the energy, the protein, the uh, the sugar content, the fiber content. Uh, relative feed value helps you purchase hay, compare one hay to another. But as far as balancing a ration, it the components that go into that relative feed value are what you really need to be looking at. 
Okay. Well, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so Mohan, uh, Dr. Mohan, what is uh, our next talk uh, next uh, next week? You remember? Uh, yes. I So uh, next week uh, on January 22nd, uh, the talk will be about hoof care. Uh, I will uh, put that in the chat box as well. And then on January 29, it will be pregnant animal health. Uh, so I'll, I'll put in the chat box. Okay. Okay, well, it's uh, five o'clock, very fast the time, just runs. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ken Coffey, for your participation. So for sure will be questions and uh, hopefully uh, we are going to have during the year uh, uh, a talk from you face-to-face uh, -face here at uh, Lincoln University in Missouri. So uh, we can talk uh, when is a good time for you to come to have a field day. Nice. Thank you. Okay, Thanks well, thank you. Comments. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, have a, a safe uh, uh, week, and we see you next week. Uh, we are going to send an email with information. Uh, so take care and thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>